Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be building image generation program, which is what you can see in action in front of you. You can see where the car is, but at the same time, the images of this are being cut into your hard drive and being uh, the RGB on the left and the semantic on your right. How do we do it? Uh, so there are certain types of image generation that you may want to do in color. And this sem for semantic segmentation, we're transitioning from RGB to this semantic view. And the important thing that those images are cut at exactly the same point in time, and therefore they will be aligned 100% pixel by pixel. Also, today we will not be generating this type of images when the car is trying to figure out the angle uh, it should steer, right? So we'll be just letting the car drive freely and taking those shots. We will also be changing whether every uh, 100 images or so, the weather will be randomly updated and this will be happening similarly what you see in front of you. Because it's very important that uh, there are different examples of RGB images with all kinds of weather from all different towns, because that will create pairs to perfectly positioned um, pixels on the semantic images, regardless of what the weather was or how dark and foggy it was. Okay, let's walk through the code. So the original file that I've used here is the one that comes with color and it's called generate traffic. It's located within main color folder and then Python API example. So what I've done is I brought that file side by side with what I made out of it. So on the left, you can see what I've created at the end and my file is called generate traffic, sorry, generate images, whereas the original file is called generate traffic. So let's go through one by one the modifications that I made. So you can see all my updates are highlighted in red and a couple of things that I needed to do here. I ne explicitly needed to uh, import NumPy and CV2. CV2 is used to generate images and save uh, images on, on, on your hard drive, which is why it's absolutely important for this code. Now, as we scroll down, we're looking for changes. A couple of things that you've seen in my previous tutorials is how we set up uh, camera callbacks. That is effectively very um, simple copy of the code that you, you've all seen before. And if you're interested, you can go back to my original tutorials like step two, step one, two, three. Uh, all of these here are essentially what the parameters are if you launch the file in command line or in terminal. So you could give, uh, you can launch it under many different options that um, I will show you later how to do. So we will leave that aside. So one thing I do change and I give it a bit more time out i give it 85 seconds because sometimes you need to load new towns and the latest towns take a while to load so i give it nice safe 85 seconds sometimes you, you could just give it a bit more and then because i wanted to generate uh, the my, my car the car that will be generating the images it will have to be model 3 because um, i'm training these images to test on real Tesla footage. So in one of my previous tutorials, I showed you how to align them to be uh, kind of the same. So the footage is generated from the front camera looks exactly or looks very similar to what real Tesla car would generate. Um, and that's why I'm using model three for it. Now the old code had this um, flagging of the hero car and my hero car here is that Tesla Model 3. And the changes you see in front of you is the very first car I generate the Model 3, which is here. And then the, the other cars are generated uh, randomly, absolutely randomly. And then I deleted this piece of code because it's only done here when it's assigned to Model 3. 
I didn't need this. It just prints the number of spawn points that it um, detects in, in a particular city or in a particular town that you're loading. So what happens here is I generate all um, all cars, the list of all cars, and the first car in that list is my uh, hero car or my Tesla that records the footage. And then here I just need to attach the actual semantic and RGB camera because it will generate RGB images and semantic images taken at the same point in time. And this is where I set up my um, the these positions or X and Z values of where the camera is located on the car should is effectively aligned to where the car is located on a real Tesla Model 3. And then the footage uh, 640 by 480 is uh, 3 by 4 aspect ratio and field of view is about 90 degrees which kind of makes it very similar to real Tesla camera. And then I'm using a couple of those callback functions that I've defined before that we've already walked through. And then the code has the spawn walkers or pedestrians and I just change these parameters, like how many pedestrians or what percentage of pedestrians will be running. Uh, that's very fun to see actually pedestrians running. And then percentage of pedestrians that will be crossing the road, which we do need to see. We do need them to cross the road, like not for fun reasons, but to, to make sure they pop in our images so we could actually see examples of them. And they Ideally, if they just right, right in front of the car, the image is quite large and that's why we want them to cross the road more often. You could actually bump it up to 0.4 or 0.5. That would be fun. It may slow the traffic, of course, but that's um, you can experiment here. Okay, now the last part. So the, the actual loop that runs within uh, the the program runs as a loop and here I give it the limit of 10,000 10, images if it generates that many it just stops and uh, I also account how many images are being generated to so set it to zero all of those initial setup the other important thing that we need to make changes to is we this is the point where we need to actually save our images but the interesting uh, point here is there could be quite heavy traffic sometimes on the car or the car could be waiting at the traffic light so we don't want to generate that image um, very often or to create multiple copies of the same thing so what I'm doing here is I give it um, a restriction where, you know, an image could be generated only if the car has made a progress since the previous image by more than five, and five in this case is meters. So that will prevent images being generated uh, for uh, like for the same like car waiting in traffic lights or stuck in traffic and because we do need to create quite a lot of cars so we could see them in our camera that's why we we need heavy traffic too so this is kind of um, it could take a while to generate those images when the car is waiting but um, the images are not being taken but at the same time we want those different examples so because it will be happening when you're not doing anything your computer will be running so it doesn't really matter the other uh, thing that i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to detect how many uh, seconds the car has been waiting at the same location so if this goes to over a minute there will be a break from this loop and the message will be stuck in traffic bailing out so it if the traffic gets too heavy this image generation will stop. You just need to keep an eye. If this happens, you need to restart the program again. 
And finally, what we do here is when we got our condition right and we cut the images, so we write them into the these uh, separate directory. The RGB RGB images go into this RGB subfolder, and you can set it up on your computer however you want. And the semantic images goes go into this uh, same uh, subfolder or semantic subfolder. So those images are cut when uh, the car has met the condition of uh, moving at least five meters and otherwise there will be nothing. Uh, so that prevents also if the car is driving very slowly to sort of generate millions of or thousands of images that where the car is hardly moving. So that you, you get my point. We don't want to have that many copies of nearly identical images. So we want variety in our imagery and that's how I did it. And then as a very last thing, every hundred images that we save, I change the weather randomly. And this is just a handy piece of code that you can copy from, I found in the other uh, examples that come with, uh, with color. And that's when you can play with the images. And there are different, um, different sort of aspects of the weather and the cloudiness, uh, cloudiness, precipitation or rain, uh, where the sun is, where, whether it's eff effectively day or night as well. Uh, precipitation uh, deposits, like whether there are puddles on the road, whether there is fog and overall wetness. So I'm not sure what wetness, how different it is from precipitation, but it, it was actually quite, uh, quite fun. Anyway, it will also give you a message when the weather changes. And again, uh, maybe it's not that um, kind of not intuitive, but changing the weather when you generate these images is absolutely important because you need to be able to generate uh, examples of different weather. And the beauty of it, however dark or very poor visibility will be, your semantic image will always come perfect. And that's why we're doing this. And that's why we're running this in color. And that's why we're using the simulator because this is one of these advantages. And then at the very end, just uh, when, when all the looping stops, we just need to make sure that we close our CV2 camera because we will be displaying that camera as the car drives so you can see what's going on. And that is basically a walkthrough of the code. And that is it. Don't forget to change your towns every time you run the um, image generation. You can generate as many as you want. Don't forget the weather will be changing automatically for you. Just don't forget to change towns. And then as soon as you get to, I don't know, 100,000 images, there will also be um, a video that I will make on how to make double your images by flipping them left to right but uh, it will be coming in the next video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Okay, now let's see how we can use this. First of all, we need to make sure that we're running our simulator. So I'm running version 9.15 here. And let's assume you want to jump to another town. So I've got this in my workings file. I've got an example where I could just grab any town that I want. And let's say I want to go to town 03. And I just run this cell. Okay, town of three, beautiful. Now we can go back to generate images. And what we need to do here is we need to kick it off from our terminal or from here. So to do that, we need to be calling that um, generate images program, which is located in semantic segmentation subfolder. So therefore we need to 
we also need to start with python every time and then we need to get that subfolder and within that subfolder we need to get a file called generate images dot pi now we need to run it with few parameters like for example how many cars and this is where you kind of need to uh, judge by the size of town because obviously if the town is massive you can have a lot of cars driving around but then um, if the town is quite small you can generate um, very congested congested traffic so if we go minus and and we say um, we try 50 cars and then when we go minus w uh, it's how many walkers and let's do 200 and let's see when we hit enter this is what's happening oh you can see pedestrians running which is great okay So what's happening now, um, the images are being generated in, in, into a subfolder. So say I've got in my self-drive semantic segmentation. So RGB go here. And if I scroll down, I should be seeing more time being generated. Or more files rather generate which is great okay. so the car now is waiting as an example and you can see that the 50 cars is not that many for this town so we should have uh, started a bit more but you can see the car is driving the pedestrian is walking over there great this is how image generation uh, works and oh this is a killer shot look the car stopped and pedestrian was clearly crossing on a red line and that was it uh, image generation just taking a copy of existing example from Carla when you run this don't forget to change your towns uh, as you do it so you have examples from different towns in different weather and time of day and um, Hopefully you enjoyed it and it was useful. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next video.